Hello and welcome to my workshop. So today we're starting a new project. It's going to be a 1967 Dodge W100. Really excited for this, so let's just get started. I start off with a 3D printed grill I designed for this Dodge. My printer isn't large enough to do this in one go, so the seam is CA glued together right in the middle. Like with many of my builds, I start off with pictures scaled up. These are just printed off on regular printer paper and taped together. To help crisp up the lines and make it easier to see, the outline is sketched in with a pencil. This also gets me accustomed to the lines of the truck and helps later on when I start to carve the molds. Whenever possible, I try and make mirrored molds at the same time. I will get the concept down on one and transfer it to the other. It's best if I make one step and switch instead of making the entire panel and then trying to copy it over. Once I am satisfied with the rough shapes of the sides, I cut out the wheel well openings on my bandsaw. More shaping happens on the benchtop belt sander before carpet taping the two molds back to back. This allows me to come in with an oscillating tool and sand the pieces to match. The Dodge is nicknamed the swept line due to the unique raised sections running the length of the truck. Instead of trying to replicate these by hand, I designed them in Fusion 360. They were then glued in place before getting some filler to smooth out the transition. This molding bridged the hood and the fender, so I printed two sets and added one to the hood mold and one to the fender mold. The excess of both was just ground off with a rotary tool. To help fill in the last little imperfections in the transition, some dolphin glaze was mixed up and carefully spread along the mold pieces. Next up is the tailgate mold. I choose to design and print the entire thing. I can get the same result with carving, cutting, and adding in pieces, but it's so much faster with the 3D printer. Like the grill, this has to be printed as two pieces and then glued together. The last touch is to glue in the raised letters in the recess.
the letters in the first mold was a bit too pronounced. So eventually I went back and sanded down the letters to make them a little shorter. Next up, I cut a thin strip of styrene that will get glued around the arch of the wheel well. Once this is filled in and sanded back, it will give that raised look to the final piece. Filler had been applied to the swept line raised sections to help transition between the MDF and the 3D printed parts. You can always fix the issues in the styrene panel later, but it's much easier to get them right in the mold first. I typically enhance the door panel and other gaps later with a scribe tool, but I like to get a head start by cutting some into the mold. This allows the material to pull down into the channel on the mold and makes the lines pronounce without having to cut so deep in the styrene. All that work on the molds for just a few seconds on the vacuum table pulling the panels. After the panels are vacuum formed, I cut them roughly out and start prepping the edges. The first thing is to cut them to shape and then you sand back for final fitment and straightness. For the bed sides, a small piece is glued in place at the end. This will eventually act to block a small gap once the tailgate is glued in place. The tailgate gets an inner panel glued in place after making sure the edges of the vacuum form pieces are good and flat. The front of the bed is just a flat piece of styrene. This is cut to shape and glued to the other end of the bed sides. Small styrene shapes are glued along the seam to add additional strength. With the bed sides taking shape, I focus on getting the floor sorted. The first thing is to cut it to shape so it will drop in between the bed sides. It's probably easier from a measuring standpoint to cut out the wheel well openings later. But from an actual cutting standpoint, it's better to do it when the piece can be laid down flat on the workbench. If you take your time, it will come out just fine. I try to leave a little extra just in case though. These inner fenders were also vacuum formed before getting glued into place. The entire bed floor unit can then be fitted and glued. It doesn't always happen, but from time to time, I need to cut out a section I glued in place earlier. Eventually, this is what I will do with the cab and the bed back. I thought they were straight across when I first looked, but later realized that there was a curve to both pieces. 
I needed to solve for this short term and long term. I did this by modifying the original mold so it had the curved section built in. I then made a special mold to match just the end sections. These were vacuum formed and glued in place to the cab and bed. To me, it's better to take the time to step back and get it right. The hood starts with a large block of MDF made by gluing up smaller pieces. This is rough cut on the bandsaw before getting fit to the front fenders. I then decided to make the windshield cowl so I could get a more accurate measurement for the hood. This was carved from MDF as well and then vacuum formed from styrene. The piece gets cut to shape and solvent glued in place. I have changed my style of making molds and this shows how I now try to get the windshield frame built into the molds. With the windshield cowl in place, I can now turn to my benchtop sander and start removing material. This hood will be a combination of first removing material and then adding some back. Anytime I have a recessed area, I try and use this technique. There are two methods I commonly use for this. One is to cut the area out and drop it down a small amount before gluing back in place. The other is to add material to form the recess. I have used styrene and 3D prints for both of these. I wanted to replicate the louvers on the hood, so I opted for a 3D print this time. The hood gets some filler and strips of styrene before it's made ready for vacuum forming. Most of the time, I make the hood as one piece. If possible, I like to make the molds along the body lines. This allows me options for modifying the truck in the future. For this instance, the hood is glued on, but if requested, I can make the hood open. The grill, which is 3D resin printed, gets placed in front to start measuring for the supports. These are cut from styrene before getting glued in place. I am using the technique of building up material with carpet tape for the roof. 
I want to eventually vacuum form this in separate pieces, but it's better to shape them as one piece. The carpet tape is so thin it allows me to do this without causing the fitment issues. I ended up pulling this apart several times, working on each piece individually. This was needed since shaping them in place would either damage the other piece or take too much time if I had to slowly sand the material away. The rear of the cap has a really cool section that I replicated with adding in a styrene sheet cut to shape. In order to get the long oval shape, a drill was used on each end and the center section was connected with a razor knife. As mentioned, each section is vacuum formed separately. On the last vacuum form, you can see the small pieces I used to modify the area between the cab and bed. The most fun part of vacuum forming is seeing the part take shape. The worst is cutting out all the molds. It's not hard, but just time consuming and boring. Here I am cutting out the pieces very roughly first. I then come back and start working on removing the mold, which often means more cutting. Since I am gluing these back together, I rarely need the part to wrap around. This is good because removing molds where the area wraps around is super hard. It can be done, but slows down the process a lot. The small styrene shapes are solvent glued along the edges. This is done after careful fitment of the pieces has been accomplished. Since this is solvent glue, the edges need to be touching as much as possible.
You can see how the parts easily slot together due to taking the time to form them as one solid block. Once the cab roof is glued together, it gets attached to the cab. Any small defects are sorted and then the door gaps can be cut in with a Tatamiya tool. At this point, it's just a bunch of back and forth with fillers and sanding. Eventually the body gets painted in primer though. The customer wanted to paint it himself, so this ends my portion. It was a lot of fun making this truck, and I am excited to have a new mold and hope to get a chance to make a few more of these in the future. Until then, I'll see you on the rocks.